This is Celebrity Psych Test, where we probe the personalities of famous faces. Are you ready to take the test? as they answer a series of statements in our tailor-made test. I don't like being the centre of attention. I think you can't spend 30 years on television without saying, you know what, I quite like being the centre of attention. Our very own psych tester is going to analyse their answers. For me, it actually brought up lots of stuff about my childhood, maybe, that I was kind of questioning. It's thought-provoking. And give them the very revealing results. You're friendly, compassionate and extremely sympathetic. Do you know what? I really like the way you're saying that, cos I am. I just feel like people need to know that. <laughs> How well do they know themselves? See, I feel I already know everything, cos I've been me for 30 years. How well do you know them? I suspect I'll probably come out of this uh, being told uh, I'm a psychopath. We're about... Let's go for it. ..to find out. <laughs> Sitting in the chair today, it's ex-Eastender and jumper on the jump, Joe Swash. I don't mind if I come out being, like, a bit of a psycho. Maybe not a psycho. Maybe, like, a little bit weird. And he's joined by pop sensation and fellow jump jumper, Sunita. I think people who don't know me usually expect me to be quite loud. I'm quite big as well, physically. And maybe, um, overbearing? Time for our celebs to settle in and reveal what makes their minds tick. Are you ready to take the test? Yes. Yes, I am. Other people's problems don't interest me at all. Ooh, I strongly disagree with that. I'm very interested in other people's problems because I think I see myself as a problem solver, probably better at solving other people's problems than my own. Other people's problems do interest me. Sometimes they play on my mind and I feel guilty about it. I sort of always put myself in other people's shoes. Um, but then again, I do struggle with empathy with things because, I don't know, I've just I've become a bit hard to things. So I'm going to stay down the middle with neutral. There is never a good reason to lie. My age. It, that's a good reason to lie, because people judge you by how old you are. So I like that to be a grey area, and I'm convinced that people don't know whether I'm <laughs> 45 or 55, but I quite... I, I like that. I find it easy to sympathise with other people's feelings. I'd say neutral for that. I mean, there's been stuff that's happened to me as a child. I've lost one of my parents and I've grieved over things really early on that... Things like death and stuff like that, I find hard to be sympathetic. I'm quite stony about things like that. It's just like, I don't like people crying around me. I've always hated people crying around me. So sometimes I can be... unsympathetic towards other people's feelings. Putting absolute trust in someone can only end in tears. No, I don't want to believe that. No. I strongly disagree with that. I don't think you should put absolute trust in anyone. You've always got to hold a little bit back. I think you've always got to leave yourself enough space to look after your own and to look after yourself. I get bothered by things quite easily. I agree with that. Things do bother me quite easily. Someone eating crisps really, really noisily. I feel like they're doing it to get on my tits. I've got bad, quite bad road rage. Little things can drive me insane. I would rather be honest and modest than be a liar and a success. Strongly agree. I've had lots of temptation and, and lots of opportunities for all kinds of things, especially when you're going through certain things in life and you're struggling and you haven't got enough money or you haven't got enough this or whatever. That, you know, I've sort of thought, oh, gosh, you know, I should have done this and I should have done that. But... To be honest, you know what? I sleep well at night. I prefer to have a solid plan rather than improvise things as I go. I do like to have a solid plan, but I do tend to improvise in a lot of things that I do. For example, a flat pack. I might get some flat pack furniture and I will try and build it just from the picture. Instead of getting the book out and doing it properly, following the plan, I end up trying to copy this picture, doing it off my own back and then end up with, like, a bit missing or too many bits, and I never tend to learn my lesson 
a neutral, please? Obviously, it's always great if you can have a plan, but I'm also someone who has a plan and they will suddenly go a completely different direction. I have a wide vocabulary. Um... I'm going to say neutral, because I think I do have a wide vocabulary. My... Yeah. But I've lived with toddlers and young people for so long, I feel like I have dumbed down my vocabulary a lot so that I can be sure they understand. It's wide enough. Yeah, I agree. I think most successful people lead upstanding, principled lives. I strongly disagree, because I know so many really successful people who are, you know, you would just think, look, if, if behaving is the key to success, like, how on earth <laughs> have they become so successful? So, yeah, I strongly disagree. I think I, I disagree with... I strongly disagree with that. I think a lot of successful people are not upstanding. Usually people with authority, people with a lot of power over other people tend to abuse it. They do tend to say you need to tread on a lot of people on your way up. I often leave things lying around instead of putting them back where they belong. When I come home, you know exactly where I've been because you just see the pattern, the trail of clothes leading to the room that I ended up in. So I strongly agree with that. I strongly disagree with that. If things aren't in place, I think I, f I, think I can't relax properly. I'll kind of have to sort of get up and fix it, which I know sounds a bit... What's it, what's it called? Is it called OC, OCDC or something like that? I have a sharp tongue. I grew up in a family where we can be quite harsh with each other and I've grown up that way and sometimes you can do that to other people that haven't and they, they're a little bit like, oh, they take it to heart. And I've got to remember that not everyone grew up in a house where you could scream and shout at each other and drop it the next day. So I'd agree with that. Test complete. Hey! Yay! Let's find out if I'm a psycho, eh? I'm sure I've revealed a lot of things that are really new because I don't think anyone's ever spoken to me um, like this before that wasn't a close friend, really. I let people think I'm one sort of person, bubbly, outgoing, smiley, not caring the world, but really, deep down, I've got all those issues and insecurities. Our psych tester, Lee, has been watching and analysing our guests' responses. The test focuses on six key personality traits and has been taken by thousands of people around the world. Hey, Joe. The first trait Lee wants to feed back on is their emotional stability. You're very good at managing your emotions and coping with the everyday stresses of your life. You are aware of when things do stress you out or irritate you and you internalise that and keep them feelings to yourself. Is that a good thing or what do you think? People deal with stress in different ways mm -hmm. and this sounds like this is one of your coping mechanisms. Do you know, I think it's that thing of, of sort of not wanting to behave badly in public because you're used to being watched and you want to be professional and, yeah. you know, you don't want to be branded the crazy screaming diva. While Sunita seems to be in control of her emotions, Joe's emotions appear to be in control of him. So the test results have shown that you are very up and down. So this means you're edgy, have trouble controlling your emotions and find it really hard to relax. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I agree with that. Mm. That must get quite exhausting sometimes. There's obviously a better way of controlling your emotions, so it's something I need to work on. The next character trait Lee is picking up on is how organised their lives are. You really do like to do things by the book. You're well organised, you know where everything is, mm -hmm. and you pay great attention to detail. Yes. Is that good or is that, um, what do you call it, like, o o how do you say it, OCDC? It, it's, 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 it's not a judgement, it's just a, it's just a character just a trait thing. of yours. You're a very busy woman, you've got a family, you've got a career, and you need that plan in place to give yourself that permission to... Yeah. To, to experience that free yeah, flow. Yeah, that's, that's how it feels. But Absolutely. But just every time I, I said it, I started to think, oh, gosh, this sounds like, a, you know, like I'm obsessively c controlled, Not you know, at or something. All. Yeah. It sounds like you've got a good balance, actually, because you're allowing yourself to feel that free flow as well. Joe's life seems a little more chaotic. You are very off the cuff. <laughs> so, yeah. and that would suggest that you're impulsive, you're easygoing, you're yeah. very flexible. Um, and just a couple of things you said about being messy. There's a trailer close from... You see exactly where I've been. Yeah. Is that a good thing, being off the cuff? 
The more extreme off the cuff would be sloppy, forgetful, unreliable. Right. So I'm not saying that you are in. I mean, I'm, you're there. I own all of them okay. to a certain degree, yeah. So maybe this is something that you need to work on. Pull in a little bit. Mm. I automatically took that as a good thing. But when you think about it, it's probably not a good thing. That's a good one. I like that. That's opened my eyes to it. When it comes to how she views the world and other people, Lee found Sunita to be cautiously optimistic. You believe in the goodness of the world. You're aware of the games that some people play, but you choose not to play and stick to your own morals and values. Yeah, 100%. How does that sound? That's exactly it. I still believe that you can still win the game and play it straight, but, you know, maybe that's naive, but I think it's better to be naive and happy. You know? And authentic <laughs> as well. Yeah. I think authenticity seems to be important to you yes. as well. Yeah. Whilst Joe has a real sympathy for others, it seems his challenging childhood has left him as a bit of a tough cookie. You don't like people crying around? No, I can't stand people crying around me. I think it's, like it's a throwback for when my dad passed away when I was a kid. I grew up in a house where my mum and my sisters would, would, would be mourning and I couldn't be around it. I didn't want to be around it, I didn't want to see it. And as I've got older, I've still got that... I'm, un I'm, I'm uncomfortable when people are crying around me. Because it's quite a contradiction, isn't it, I think? Yeah. Well, but maybe that's why, actually, when I think about it, it's maybe it's too much for you to bear, if you're really feeling... I don't want to be feeling, around it, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I can't do tears or crying. The overall results suggest that Sunita stands out as being highly emotionally stable, a real people person, and very in control of her life. By contrast, Joe comes out as emotionally volatile, which makes him less accommodating of other people, whilst his day-to-day -day life is bordering on the chaotic. Having taken the test and heard the feedback, what do our guests make of their results? Everyone knows who they are, who they think they are, but it's nice for someone else to kind of have a little dig around and, and pull bits out that you didn't think were there. I love the way he was able to to actually really see the real me so quickly without actually knowing me at all.